In this presentation, we will adjust new account balances within QuickBooks Pro 2019. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. Here we are in QuickBooks. We're in the home page. We have the open windows open. You can have the open windows open by going to the view tab up top and going to the open windows list. What we're going to do now is adjust opening balances. What we have done so far or what we can imagine having been done so far is that we've uploaded a new company and we've entered some of those opening balances. The idea being that we started a company we already had balances, but now we want to enter that information into QuickBooks and we're going to set up our opening balances, which we have done. Now we need to clean it up a little bit. So to think about this, let's go to the banking or to the reports <laughs> to our balance sheet. So we're going to go to the reports. We're going to go down to a company and financial. We're looking for the balance sheet. So we're going to go to the balance sheet standard balance sheet standard. I'm going to change the date now. The, the dates that we entered the information in as of is 12-31-18. So I'm going to say enter. That's what we have. Now this is our data. If your data, if you've been following along with this and your data is different than this, then uh, it's probably a date. It might be a date issue. So you might have entered something and it might have entered as of the current date. So you want to go through these accounts and basically look what doesn't line up and then possibly go through there and figure out if it's a date problem that's in there. And one way you can kind of figure that out is to change the dates up here. So if, if it's later date, you can put a later date there and see if, the, see if your numbers change. And if they do, then go into that number, drill down, use the auto zoom and see what the difference is. Uh, and then you could change the dates <laughs> to line everything up. But in any case, even if we're not using the same sense of data, what we've done is we've entered all these beginning balances and we've done, we've used QuickBooks in order to do that. We've told QuickBooks, hey, here's the beginning balances and you do whatever you got to do in order to make this work. What did QuickBooks do in order to make it work? It set up this opening balance account and it set up these accounts in net income. So what makes up this net income number? I'm going to go to reports up top. We'll look at the profit and loss, which makes up the net income. And we'll go down to the uh, company and financials, profit and loss. I'm going to change the dates to the, to the last year that we worked on. So 01, well, the year that we entered the information in, 01, 01, 18. I like to do the whole year. So January 1st, 2018 to 12, 31, 2018. So we only really need, we entered it all as of one day. So 12, 31, 18. And you can see that, you know, we didn't do anything this year. All we did was enter data into the balance sheet. We didn't even enter anything into the income statement, but QuickBooks made these things happen here and created net income of 5,500 in order to force the thing to work. Is that a problem? No, the income statement is not a problem because this account, this income statement is going to roll over and go away as of January 1st, 2019, which is the year that we're going to start entering data. So we're not really worried about this number. We're more concerned because the income, because we're never going to print this report. We're not going to show anybody this. If we have questions about anything happened prior to January 1st, 2019, we'll go to whatever source we were using in order to create the data prior to us putting it into QuickBooks. We're drawing a line in QuickBooks and saying as of this date forward, that's when we're using QuickBooks. So this number doesn't matter because we're never going to print this report out of the system. We're only going to be printing reports from January 1st, 2019 and forward. So if we go to the balance sheet, then we're going to say, okay, the balance sheet, I'm going to the open windows balance sheet in the equity section. Okay. I can see that net income. Now, again, it's on the balance sheet here, but that's because QuickBooks is a little funny to have net income down there, but it helps us to tie it out. Why isn't that a problem? Well, because again, if I go to, to 2019, 1231, 2019, then that number, I'm going to hit enter, and that number's got that name, not the number, but the name's going to change from net income to owner equity, which is proper. That seems normal. That's where you would think it would be. That's what we would normally call it. So that's not a problem. I'm going to go back to 2018. Now, what is a problem is this owner's equity balance account. That's, that's not normal. We don't normally have an account called owner's. No, no financial statement has that account. That's QuickBooks telling us, hey, you know, this is what we did. 
with this is what we did you told us all these accounts were these amounts and in order to make that happen this is what we did and the the thing is that should be okay as long as everything else as long as we entered everything else okay the account equation has to work so if i entered if we entered all other numbers other than equity correctly then the system is going to put in equity as the difference in order to be in balance in order for assets to equal liabilities plus equity so we entered everything except equity and basically quickbooks said i'm going to make equity work by just entering a number there to make assets equal liabilities plus equity and that should be okay but quickbooks is telling us that it did that by creating this account called opening balance equity an account that's not a real account it's only a quickbooks account it's an account that if we agree with that should be part of equity we should remove by taking the number out of here and putting it into net income so that's what we're going to do now now the easiest way to do that is with a journal entry but in order to do the journal entry we would need to know uh, debits and credits so we could try to do this with uh, registers so I'll, I'll kind of show you both ways to, to do this so I'm going to try to do it with, with registers first. Now this account is, is we're going to put it in the opening balance equities where it's, we're going to put it into the equity account. So the equity account, in other words, has to go up and this account uh, has to go down. So we can think about it that way. If you think about debits and credits, and let's see it in terms of a trial balance. If I go to reports up top and we go to uh, accounting and we go to a trial balance, You'll see it in terms of debits and credits. And so this is going to be uh, 01, 01, uh, 18 to 12, 31, 18. And this will show you everything, including the, the uncategorized income and expenses. Well, we, so I'm going to go to, to 2019. So we can just see the balance sheet accounts. And there it is. So now we have the debits over here and the credits over here. So you can see if, if you're interested in the debits and credits. The credits, are, of course, are, are, are equity is a credit. So if we want to do a journal entry we, and we want to get this down to zero, we'd have to debit it. We'd have to do the opposite thing to it. And we would credit equity. So with a journal entry, that's what we would do. We'll see that. And then we could try to do the same thing again with just saying that, uh, you know, this account has to go up and this has to go down by trying to use registers. So let's see if we can do that. Sometimes QuickBooks is a little a little tricky to do that. Uh, so it would be best to do journal entries with this if you could. But let's try to do it. The registers will should be, you know, let's see. Let's go to banking. A couple ways you can get to the register. I usually go to banking and then register, which is a little deceiving because it makes you think that you're only talking about uh, check registers. So the other way you can do that is you could go to lists over here and chart of accounts. And you could go down to um, to the equity account. I want to I want to look at the equity account and opening balance equity. So uh, you know, let's go to opening balance equity. I go to opening balance equity, double click on it, and we can see that it has this balance in it of seventy nine thousand eight ninety six. It's a credit balance, but it shows it here as a debit as a increase and decrease. We want to make it zero. So I could just say, okay, I want to make it zero as of Let's make this date as of 12.31.18. That's correct. So I'm going to tab through. Nothing here, nothing here. We want to decrease it by 79.896. So I want to make it go to zero, in other words. And the other account we're going to pick then, if we select the drop down, it's going to be the equity account, which will be uh, owner's equity. So we'll pick owner's equity. That's going to be the other account. So it's going to say, I want to make this go down and do whatever you got to do to owner's equity to, to fix it, which will make owner's equity go up in this case. Now to record it, you got to either hit record here or just select enter. So record, it's going to say, hey, you're posting to retained earnings. Do you really want to do that? Because uh, we don't normally do that. <laughs> We're going to say that's okay this time because uh, th this is the setup process. And then once we do that, we have it there. I'm going to close this back out and uh, close this. And here we have it. So if I go to the balance sheet, so on the open windows balance sheet, then uh, now we have just the owner's equity and net income. So opening balance went away. Why? Because it's zero now. So it's not going to show the account at all, even though it still exists because it is now zero. So we, this is what we have now then. And that looks okay. That looks, that looks proper, except for this net income number. That's a little funny. 
but it'll go away as of the first day of the next year. So as of, to, if, we, if we change the date to 2019 and refresh, then okay, that looks, that looks correct. We, everything is normal now. We don't have any accounts that are like indicating that something funny happened, like an opening balance equity account. It should all be in equity. Uh, and, and that's what we have now. So that's how you're going to adjust that. If we go to the, to the trial balance, then we can see it in terms of debits and credits. What happened is we, uh, you know, took out the, the opening balance equity and we put it into the owner's equity. Now, again, if we want to see the detail, we can double click on this here or on the balance sheet, we can double click on the equity there. So if I double click on this and then I change the dates to last year, uh, there, there's our activity. Here it is. So if I double click on that, uh, here's the adjustment. Now, if you want to see the journal entry that it made, because this, this screen really means that we didn't, we didn't know what to do other than a journal entry. We didn't have any form that could drive this. It was a journal entry, which you can see right here indicated. So I'm going to double click on that. And then here's the journal entry. So here's the journal entry. So this would probably be the easiest way to enter it for someone, if you know debits and credits, to actually do this as a journal entry, which would be to go to companies and uh, make journal entries to get to this screen. And then you can enter it here. Same, same idea. So we debited opening balance equity to make it go down. And then we credited equity to make it go up. So I'm going to close this back out, close this back out, close this back out. And so this is our end result. And this is our end result. So I'm going to, I'm going to make this report as of 1231.18. And then just practice again, just practice printing this out. So I'm going to print this report. Uh, so that we have it in our system. I'm going to print it two ways as we go through our system. I'm going to print it uh, as of uh, an Excel sheet to put it in the Excel sheet that we currently have, and then we'll print it as a PDF file. So to do that, I'm going to go to Excel. We're going to go to create uh, an, a, a new worksheet within, so it's a new worksheet, and then we're going to put it into an existing workbook. So, so that's going to be, that's what they call the Excel file. I'm going to find that workbook by browsing. And this is what, what I've been working on through this process. We put it on the desktop under a folder called get gray guitars reports and then section six. And so I'm just going to say, that's the one we want. I want to just add it to that one so that I can give it to someone all in one document. So I'm going to double click on that. It's going to say the, okay. And then we're going to export to that worksheet. So here we have it. Uh, notice it, it put it kind of in a random section. I, I have a few tabs here. It did this again. I'm going to go back to this tab. I don't really need this. So I'm going to right click on that tab and delete it. So we're going to delete that tab. This is a tab we had before. This is the new tab. It called sheet one, the default sheet. I'm going to double click on it to change the name and we'll call it uh, balance sheet. And then I want to drag it to the end to have it in the same order that we use it in. So I'm going to put my cursor on it, left click and drag it to the end. So there's that. Notice again, if we format it, if I, if I select this item, I'm going to say, okay, it has the headers on it. So that's good. So when I print it, it'll be fine. I'm going to go back over here. It, it has split panes now. So I'm going to go back up to the view tab, windows group and split unsplit the panes and there it is so this again is a document we can provide someone if we wanted to give them these three reports without having to uh, uh, give them three different pdf files and that might be helpful to somebody we could also if we want to give one pdf file with the three reports print and um, and print it to a pdf writer such as the cute PDF writer, which is free. And then we want to print just not just this report, but the entire workbook. So it'll print then one, two, three pages. It'll print each tab in one PDF file, which we can then send at one time. So that's a useful way to just kind of, a couple of ways to think about how to, how to sort your information. So I'm going to close this out. I'm going to save it and save it. Now, the other thing you can do is, is uh, export it, of course, as a PDF, which you can do by going to File, Save as PDF, or go to Print, 
and reports and again use that PDF writer which can be very useful if there's any problems with saving as a PDF in this program or any other. So we're going to go to print and then it's going to it's going to the correct location again. So there's where it's going. Okay and then I'm going to put it here as the balance sheet. Oop. Balance sheet. Now again, note that if I if I give someone information in this format, I'd have to give them an email or something, him or her an email with three forms to it, or zip the document, which is a little nicer, so that I can attach just one document to the email, although within that document you have three forms, as opposed to giving it all to them in one form. So again, formatting this stuff and just sorting the documents is kind of half the battle with working with these database systems. So I'll save that. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info.